mean as to make this just somehow Now let me put this down and I'll grab it later. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hello everybody and hello folks who are online with us. Little technical problems this morning. This is like I said, plan C. I guess we're up to now trying to get online and we're working on it. There's something with the camera that just does not want to talk to any of our stuff. So we're back on Mevo. So sorry guys, you're not going to see the captions at the bottom where you can easily read them. It's on the screen. So hopefully that works. Some announcements to share as we gather this morning. It is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff coming up in the next few weeks. First off is the 20, the last Sunday of this month, the 25th of July is our semi-annual meeting of the congregation and everyone's invited to be there. It'll be right after worship. It will be in person down in the fellowship hall. I will have Zoom up for those who would prefer to attend via Zoom, but our major thing will be for all of us in person. Jenda just says that we need to talk about things, so I invite you to all be there. We'll have some updates, have a couple videos planned because um, of to celebrate things that have happened, but please plan on being here after worship on the 25th. Also the 25th, we're going to have a very special worship service. We are going to be worshiping around the world, if you will. We're going to be using what the Senate has put together, which is a combined worship with our partner diocese church in Tanzania. So you're going to see the church we've been helping support and have a combined thing. It's really cool. You might even see somebody in the video you recognize, and it's not me. So I hope you will come and be part of that as well. Also, on August 1st, which would have in other times been rendezvous weekend, there's not rendezvous this weekend, but the Ecumenical Clergy Association decided we can still worship. So we're doing a community-wide worship, and they just put out a video to promo it, but I didn't have time to upload it to our computer, so you'll see it next week. But we're going to worship with the whole community over at the park. So, you know, when you park in the, the lot over there, instead of turning this way, coming to the church, turn that way and go to um, that the grassy area and be part of that. It should be an exciting week. We've been working on it and some service projects to do in connection with it. So this week council is meeting. So I hope those of you who are part of that, if I got it right, we're meeting this Tuesday. Maybe it's next Thursday, Tuesday. Anyways, council still has to meet this month. And some of you have asked about whether there's gonna be changes and how we do things. That will be decided at council um, this month because we have to make those connections since the proclamations is businesses can do what they want, but so just to let you know that, I think those are the things I have to share with you. Oh, there's one other in case some of you did not see it on um, email that we'll be praying today for the family and friends of Carol Forsyth, one of our members who um, passed away this weekend. She has been in the memory care unit at, is it Takeo? Is that how you pronounce it? Tico. Tico, thank you. <laughs> so you all know that. Um, and you know, Chester, her, her son, kept trying to find a way to get her back closer here and it just never worked out. Um, so I will be celebrating her life, but please keep Chester and the rest of the family in your prayers. Okay, enough run of the mouth. Are there things though that you all would like to share as we gather this morning? Well, then I would invite you if you are, as you are able to stand as we join in the confession and forgiveness. Amen. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which you live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the congregation who is here to be seated and have some time with our kids who, although we don't have some here, maybe we have some online. And I invite us to take just a couple minutes with you all. But I need some help. And that means some of you here, someone here is going to have to help me this morning since I don't have any kids. Oh, okay, Vicki, come here. Come up here and help me. You can just stand kind of right here because that's only focusing about right here. Oh, come get in the picture, at least. Okay, so does anybody think, I, what I needed was somebody six foot tall. Did I, did I get somebody six foot tall? Are you sure? What do you all think? Did I pick somebody who's six foot tall? Well, I don't know. I brought a measuring stick to see if she is six foot tall. Six feet. See, she's more than six feet tall. She measures. Oops, I got upside down footprints. Let's go at least this way. So, see, she's way. She measures up. She's way more than six feet tall. Thank you very much. I brought this today because we're always so afraid when it comes to God and our faith that we don't measure up. But you know what? In Jesus, we do. We're going to hear some lessons today that talk about people and how they decide whether or not they measure up. And I want all of us to remember that God uses a different measuring stick than we and in our baptism, and because we believe, and because of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, we measure up because of God's grace and mercy and forgiveness. So I'm going to keep my pictures, and when I forget that I don't measure up, I say, Christ, help me. And then I'll remember that in him I do, and so do you. So let's pray. Jesus. Thank you for loving us and for forgiving us, for taking our sins away and helping us to live differently. When we doubt that, help us turn back to you, that we might live and be excited and share that glory with everybody. Thank you, Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. I invite us to stand as you are able and we join in the beginning hymn. playing and uh, yeah um, yeah I say I, I get the company's book since that probably has the beginning thing I <laughs> she dropped her glasses <laughs> uh, it's number 618 got it
desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Well, good morning, and I hope we have no technical difficulties here. I'll see if I can read without interrupting. <laughs> All right, we're looking at Amos 7, 7, 15, and Amos is speaking. This is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. The Lord said, see I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The highest places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be made waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. And then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go to exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away. And Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go and prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our psalm today is 85 through 8 through 13. And you know the the, 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 the You know. People <laughs> And to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may be well in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God the battle. Here ended the song for today. I would invite you to stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Okay, I lost part of my mic. King Herod, or King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him, on whom I beheaded has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. 
And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guards and orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded him in, in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. My dad was good at building things. Now, he wasn't a professional carpenter or an artist or a sculptor. He liked making things out of odd stuff. Like the time he built our picnic table out of some overran concrete from the place where he worked. Nobody was moving that picnic table, let me tell you. Well, when we moved into the last house all of us lived in, our basement was just this big open space. So one day my dad decided we needed a wall so that you have kind of a living area and a washroom, junk room, you know, all that stuff that accumulates in your basement because you don't know where else to put it. So he set about building a wall. And I was his helper. I would say apprentice, but you expect someone with apprentice gets to actually do something. I held tape measures and boards and ran for tools. So we built our wall and he built it in sections. And he squared up the first section to the stairs that came down and we built it across and he checked it all the way and we were on that last section. And he wanted to make sure that the distance between the wall, which went to the bedrooms, and the wall we were putting up, they came perpendicular, that that opening was consistent from top to bottom. And so we got it all set, he squared it up, dropped a plumb plum line down it, it was straight this way. You'd think it was good. Then we measured it against the wall. It was way out, like a good chunk out. So dad took his tr trusty hander, started smacking the end of the wall to get it to move so that it was equal distant. When we got that to work, then he measured everything, making sure we hadn't got it out of plumb or out of square, and it was all messed up. What? I must have done something wrong, obviously. I obviously was not holding the tape measure correctly. So dad went out and smacked it again till it got right with the side that was there. Perfect. This way, still not right. We must have done this dance probably three or four times and we could not get it to work. Finally dad thought, well, let's look at the wall. <laughs> that was already there. And what he realized was that when they put the bedroom door on that bedroom, whoever did it didn't really obviously care because it was, it jutted out. It was really weird. When you actually looked at it, the wall went like this. Yeah. And there was like two inches at the bottom that was out in the middle of the walkway. No wonder we weren't gonna get it all to work. So dad decided, get it plumb, get it square to itself, good enough. I learned a valuable lesson that day be careful what you measure against, because you might just be wrong. Sounds a lot like what God is trying to do in that Old Testament, Testament lesson from Amos today. A little background. Remember that Amos was a prophet that lived after King David a few hundred years, and it was when the kingdoms were divided. There was a northern kingdom, which is Israel and the southern kingdom, which is Judah. And in the northern kingdom of Israel, as you would expect, the worship center and the capital was, was 
actually, Northern Kingdom capital wasn't as you expect. Northern Kingdom is Israel, capital is Samaria, and the place to worship was Bethel. Southern Kingdom, Judah, Jerusalem is the, the space, the worship center in the capital. Now, there were some really not good things going on in Israel at the time. Dishonest merchants, abuse of the poor, court decisions being sold and bought, corruption of the priesthood, idolatry, just to name a few. So God calls Amos a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees who lives in Judah, that southern kingdom, to go to Israel and prophesy to them. And so Amos does. And he talked about God holding a plumb line in their midst and the people being way out of plumb spiritually. That is far from God's, where God wanted them to be. And Amos warned, unless they repented, they would suffer God's wrath. As you might imagine, the people did not like to hear that. And Amaziah, the chief priest of Bethel, that worship center, stepped forward to remind Amos, you're a foreigner here. Essentially telling him if he really wanted to prophesy, go home, talk to your own people, leave us alone. He had no business being in Israel. And Amos responded by telling Amaz Amaziah what was gonna happen to Israel. You see, earlier in this chapter, Amos had seen the Lord kind of send two different problems, if you will, upon Israel. One, where there was a plague of locusts and another one about fire consuming it. And on each of those, he had interceded for Israel and God said, okay, I won't do it. They kind of like Moses back a few weeks earlier. But now Israel refused to repent and Amos doesn't intercede. And so Amos tells them that the Israel's king Jeroboam will die by the sword, that the nation will be destroyed, that the people will go into exile and a whole bunch of stuff. As an aside, that all really did happen when the Assyrians came in and conquered, but not quite yet. Amaziah didn't believe a word Amos said, and he ordered him to go home. Kicking foreigners out when you don't like how they talk is not a new problem. So Amos answered the king's order by prophesying that the coming year would be one of the worst ones for Israel and for Amaziah. Harsh words, not good. The people of Israel and Amaziah specifically had wandered far from God's plumb line. And there's only one outcome for being perpetually out of plumb, collapse and eventually needing to be restored, re needing to be destroyed and rebuilt. We may not like a prophet like Amos, and we may not think that we have any of them in our own day, but that doesn't mean we can ignore God's word. That emphatic invitation to look at our life and our action is as much for us as it is for Amos and those he prophesied to. And we, like Amaziah, may not want to hear any of it, and we may try to get rid of those who talk such nonsense, but that doesn't change the reality. So what is your plumb line? Is it from God? Or are you measuring yourself and your actions against something less than what God asks of you? We see what happens when our plumb line is anything but from our God. We hear about it as Herod Antipas, the Herod of our gospel text, shows that it was his own ego and his reputation that was what guided him, his plumb line, if you will. And we see how out of plumb he was. It cost John the Baptist his life. Herod was do, willing to do anything to measure up to his own distorted way of thinking. One part of this gospel text that always irritates me, 
even more than the fact that John the Baptist got killed, was the fact that Herod had so little of a moral compass that he allowed a young child and the word she parroted to dictate his actions. Now, I don't know about you, but I can think of numerous times in my childhood when my parents said no, right in front of their friends and mine, when I wanted to do something really stupid. I mean, that's what parents do, set boundaries and say no when it's appropriate. And I wonder if any of Herod's guests were outraged by his actions. Or did they too just go along to get along because that's what you do if you want to get ahead? Herod is definitely way out of spiritual and moral plumb. So where are you? And where am I? As we contemplate these words from Amos. Should we prepare for God's wrath to rain down upon us any day now? While I certainly do not have the power to tie God's hands, I'll stick with scripture on this one. There is no question that we do not live per in perfect accord with God's will and God's ways. We sin. We go astray. We are out of spiritual plumb and sometimes on a regular basis. And as with Amos's time, there is only one outcome for being perpetually out of plumb, collapse, and eventually needing to be destroyed and rebuilt. Is that the future we look forward to? The good news is that in Jesus Christ that has already happened. As Paul tells us in his second letter to the Corinthians, for the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for us all. Therefore, all have died. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ. God is reconciling the world, not counting trespasses against them and entrusting that message of reconciliation to us. Through the waters of your baptism, you have died and are made alive. You are a new creation. The old has passed away. God has rebuilt you into a living temple where his Holy Spirit dwells. We still struggle daily with living in that new reality and with our sins, and sometimes we don't do the best at things. But then we remember that cross traced upon us in baptism, and we feast once more on Christ's body and blood, utter words of confession and her proclamation, proclaim to us forgiveness, and live one more day just a little closer to God's plumb line. And we do it all because of Christ's grace and mercy that comes to us through his cross and resurrection. And with that assurance, we live not in fear, of, but in fellowship and proclaim that message of reconciliation given us. I lived in one of those basement bedrooms we had too, and saw that wall every day while I was in high school. And I remembered what happened when we tried to put it up. And I was so glad that Dad and I figured out the problem. Each day I live in the reality of my baptism. And I ask God to help and guide me as I want to walk just a little closer to God's plumb line. And I know that God measures me in a way that I don't. So how about you? How's your days going? I invite you to pray with me. Holy God, your words reach beyond time and meet us where we live. Sometimes we don't want to hear what you have to say. It hits too close to home. We forget that we are created in your image and made for good works that continue your reconciliation. 
When we wander far from your ways, move us back to you. Show us how to live in your promises and not be controlled by promises we cannot or at least should not have ever made. Remind us that through the challenges, we are still new creations in Christ. O oh God, as it is needful and in accord with your will, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you need your books again because it's still not going to work. Turn to 769 if you have trust in God to guide you. And I originally chose two verses, the first and the fourth. That's okay. We're flexible. <laughs> to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now come before our God in prayer. Holy God, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness you might be glorified. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Awesome creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth. Nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops. Bless the work of farmers and laborers. We pray for healing for our parched lands and dryness to the ones overcome by water. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power 
to the voices of prophets in our day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and immigrant. Protect victims of prejudice and discrimination. Bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer. Especially this day, we remember in prayer the family and friends of Carol Forsyth. We pray for Marty, John, and Mary. For Verna, Charlene, and Joyce. For John, Judy, and Anne. And for all on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for this holy house and all those who worship with us. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed, for our custodian and those who care for our building, for our office staff and the council members, for worship assistants and our tech crew, and for all our volunteers who give so freely of themselves. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace in a way you and the other person are most comfortable. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't really care if it goes with I would invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for the gathered people of God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Invite the congregation to be seated. We'd ask you once again to come through the center aisle and to pick up elements. And then put your empties in the baskets as you return. We would normally have music, but we won't, so sing your favorite song in your head as you commune. <laughs> Give me just a second here.
invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So Karen has agreed to play one more song for us, so grab that red book in front of you. Turn to 656, which is Blessed Be the Tie. Thanks be to God. Ooh.